Hi everybody, this is Rob with Deliberate Living Systems. Today is Sunday, December 6th, and it's about 1.30 p.m. out here on the leased parcel of land at York Meadow Farm. It has been a long, long, long time since we did a video update, but better late than never, so here we are, almost four months after the last video. So stay tuned. We'll give you a breakdown of what went down in the last video, and we'll take a look around today and give you an update as to what's going on here at the farm. Let's check it out. Okay, so the last video we did was on August 25th, and at that time we gave a breakdown of where we were at with the market garden, what we were doing to compensate for the lack of productivity, and we also talked about the lease agreement between Deliberate Living Systems and the landowners where York Meadow Farm is located. We talked about the NRCS as well, and that's really about it. Uh, we took a look at where the high tunnel was gonna go. We'll take a look at the almost complete high tunnel here in just a minute, but that's about it. Market garden update, lease agreement, and high tunnel and NRCS. So we'll hit on all of those things again with additional updates of what we've been doing over the past few months. And even though we're going into winter, hopefully you won't have to wait another three months for the next video. So let's talk about all that stuff and share what we've been doing. Come on. All right, so here we are at the Market Garden. Our market garden is approximately 2,300 square feet. The last time that we talked about the market garden, half of it was sown in buckwheat. The other half was still uh, productive with tomatoes and things like that. So since then, what we've done is had two cycles of buckwheat growing in here. We tore out the garden early, basically as soon as the tomatoes were done, and we're able to get a third round of buckwheat. What you see here is 40 yards of organic material that I got from a landscaper friend of mine. This is basically composted junk. Um, really good, really good stuff that he delivered here. Uh, four loads, 40 yards, and we had this dumped and spread after we utilized Nick Ferguson's recipe for building soil. So. What that means is that we dumped probably, I don't remember the exact quantities, but about a dozen bags of layer feed, maybe about the same in dried molasses. We also put some phosphate down, uh, some bone meal, and some lime in order to feed the bacteria and the worms and all other soil life. We're hoping that the leaf humus and chipped material will provide some beneficial uh, fungus and mycorrhizae next year and we're hoping that this area is going to be a real productive garden. The plan at this time is to do what we did two seasons ago which was more, uh, raised beds and we'll probably begin a more permanent raised bed system here in the market garden. Okay while this isn't much to look at and it's not very impressive at this point this is where we're at with our little perennial nursery. We have two varieties of comfrey up here, Bocking 4 on this side, and then Bocking 14 uh, in the back there. And up here, we have a, uh, not a bunch, but a, a few bare root trees that were given to me by Greg Burns and Rich Fraitzel. Uh, we have some elderberries, some some chestnuts, some hazelnuts, some uh, apples, some goji berries, some sea berries. And what, what's really surprising to me is that these goji berries, after a few hard frosts, still have their foliage. They're doing really well. And I'm excited to see how these will do here on our farm. Okay, so moving up, we're gonna walk up towards the southernmost parcel, and in the distance, you can see the high tunnel. What we did was over the course of two weekends, built a 30 by 96 high tunnel. 
with a lot of upgrades. This high tunnel is sweet. It is a Cadillac high tunnel. I'm very proud of this. I won't go into a whole lot of detail about the high tunnel now. We'll just take a real quick look at it and maybe I'll come back another time and do another video strictly on the high tunnel to show it off in a little bit further detail. Okay, so in the last video, you saw us do a lot of uh, till and remove soil. We've got the lowest point of the baseboard even with the highest point of the ground right about there in the middle. And as you can see, this baseboard is level but here on the end, it's still about a foot and a half above ground level. So we've got a crown right in the middle of our high tunnel with some gravel backfill to assist in drainage. And then excess water will be, you can almost see it, where, where water is gonna be moving down like that, off, shedding off the roof of the high tunnel and down that way. Let's uh, let's head inside and take a look around. Okay, 30 by 96 high tunnel on the inside, 2,880 square feet. It is significantly warmer in here. We have yet to start working the ground and getting cover crops in. Once we get a cover crop in, our contract with the NRCS will be fulfilled and complete and we will begin the next phase of working with the NRCS. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll do another video of the high tunnel and take a real good look at everything in here, the doors, the upgrades, the ventilation system, and show it off so that we can get a much better understanding of why we did what we did and how this is gonna factor in for the long term goals and objectives of the land here and the landowners of the farm. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is, you can see the property line uh, in, the, in the brush, the grass that's a higher length, right about there. That's where this parcel of leased land begins. Deliberate Living Systems is leasing this land from the landowners of York Meadow Farm. Uh, this front parcel, which is about, oh, almost two acres, 1.75 acres maybe of workable land, will be transitioned into a market garden based on the design systems of Jean-Martin Fortier and his market garden. Very efficient, very streamlined, and this high tunnel and eventually additional structures right here will effectively be the hub of operations for this 1.5 acre market garden. As we continue walking up the driveway, we come and see the market garden right here, blueberries in the background. We're gonna do some improvements with the blueberries, some modification I will help the landowners with uh, those improvements next year as part of our lease agreement. Right here we've got a swale, a natural swale that drains from the neighboring fields under the driveway and into that field. Part of the plan, not really sure when we're going to do this, but we will excavate out a pond here at one of the higher points of the property and utilize this as an irrigation system for the future silvo pasture down there and possibly pumping out and using it to irrigate some of our field crops up in the market garden. Okay, so as far as silvo pasture systems go, that is the plan for this two acre area up front. While it's not as big as we would like, we're making use of what we have. So we're going to develop a very intensive grazing system that is going to be based on an agroforestry silvopasture model. Some people that are doing that and doing it very well are Grant Schultz, Mark Shepard, 
Uh, those are two guys that come to mind right now. And the way that we will be, or one of the ways that we will be utilizing our plantings on contour is based on Stefan Subkowiak from the permaculture orchard. So we will likely have a silvo pasture system designed slightly off contour so that as we catch water, which flows that way down towards the wood line and also into the pond, we will be having the water flow back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, so that ultimately no water drains into the pond or excess drains into the pond in the case of very intense uh, rains. This entire area and possibly up front that's yet to be determined will be fenced in with a woven wire fence most likely and just a few weeks ago before I left on vacation I met here with my NRCS agent the Soil County and Water Conservation District engineer and we discussed fencing options and it turns out that this is a great area to be fenced we may also do one more area in the back and basically in order to do that I will be modifying the current lease agreement that I have with the landowners here to incorporate this parcel and a portion in the back in order for me to do that under the beginning farmer as a beginning farmer in conjunction with NRCS and Equip and for those that want more information on this I am in the process of assembling some information and we'll be sharing that on a podcast uh, later on this month so stay tuned for more information on that but for now that's really all we've got new project in the works one project almost complete market garden lots of organic material has been added this year we're hoping to have a an abundance and very productive year next year so lots of stuff has been taking place over the next over the past few months lots of stuff is still going to be taking place as we go into winter the work never stops but hopefully with the work that we're doing we can continue to make some videos share them with you a little more frequently than once every three to four months but hey you do the best you can with what you got and somehow time slipped away from us so with all that said, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you watching and being a part of what we're doing out here. Many thanks to everyone at Medina Permaculture. We couldn't have done the work that we did without you guys. Special thank you to all of you guys who helped build this. It's, uh, we're very grateful for it. Very happy to be working with you and very glad that you're a part of our farm with us. So. Until next time guys, take care and we'll see you soon with another video on the high tunnel, specifically about the high tunnel and have some more information at that time. Alright, take care. It's time to get to work. Bye bye.